Polkadot and its sister blockchain, Kusama, are both layer one blockchains that are up and coming, and they are being led by Gavin Wood. Gavin Wood is a co-founder of Ethereum, and he left that to found Polkadot and Kusama, and he learned from his experiences while he was at Ethereum. He says the prevailing narrative of Ethereum is that it is the one chain to rule them all, and it's the one chain that ever needs to exist. However, he does not believe in this chain maximalism. Polkadot is, in many respects, the biggest bet in this ecosystem against chain maximalism. Even if there were one perfect chain, um, I don't think it would stay perfect for very long. To support this view, Polkadot has a vastly different software architecture than other Layer 1 solutions currently available. Polkadot features a main relay chain, which provides the overall security to the ecosystem, and individual parachains, or these are individual blockchains, connect to this relay chain in order to take advantage of its security advantages, but those individual parachains can be customized for their specific use cases. And when I say connect, I actually mean that these parachains lease slots on the Polkadot relay chain. This is where parachain auctions come in, where projects have to compete with one another for space on the relay chain. During this process, there's a concept called crowd loans where the Polkadot community can stake or lock their coins to essentially vote on these projects getting a spot on the main relay chain. And these tokens are locked for the entire duration that this parachain is on the Polkadot relay chain. Kusama is the exact same architecture as Polkadot except it was released before Polkadot and is meant to evolve more rapidly than Polkadot. So it's a less conservative blockchain and it's something that these parachains are deploying to first before they move on to deploying to Polkadot. And this brings us to Corora, which won the first ever parachain slot on Kusama this past summer. And by, they did so by locking up over 500,000 KSM. Corora is the DeFi hub of Kusama, and this founding team has plans to release the sister protocol, Akala, on Polkadot once those parachain auctions begin. Let's now take a look at the capabilities that Corora offers. No other projects in, in the rest of the entire crypto ecosystem compare to the all-in-one features that Corora offers. So let's now take a look at the three main features within Corora. In Corora, users can mint multi-collateral stable coins so they can stake many different types of cryptos as collateral in order to mint KUSD, which is the Corora stablecoin. They can also swap tokens and become a liquidity provider on Corora Swap, the decentralized exchange within Corora. And finally, they have something called liquid staking, which frees up staked Kusama so that it can be used in other DeFi protocols. And let's get more into what Corora means by DeFi Hub. It offers something called DeFi primitives that add functionality to the entire Kusama ecosystem. These are the composable money Legos that you may have heard of if you are a listener of Bankless. For example, one DeFi primitive is the stablecoin KUSD, which has a stable asset price and it is more ideal for a medium of exchange than other volatile crypto assets. Also, since users can use their other cryptos as collateral, they're able to ha maintain a long position on these assets and take KSU KUSD stablecoins for payments in the short term, so they maintain exposure to these crypto assets. Another DeFi primitive is LKSM or Liquid KSM, and this is the token that one receives once they've staked their Kusama and the Liquid staking feature on Corora. This liquid staking unlocks liquidity in staked Kusama because normally what happens when you stake Kusama, it's bonded and locked, so you cannot use it elsewhere. But when you do liquid staking, you receive LKSM, which can be used in other areas in the DeFi space. And I'm gonna show some examples later on in this video. The Corora team says this dynamic is going to empower new ecosystem growth and new product innovations. 
And if you watch this video shortly after I posted it, Carora is running an incentives program to get people to start using this staking feature, and they are airdropping their car token, which is the native token to Carora. There are two ways to get involved in this incentives program, and the first is by staking LKSM. So we need to first stake our Kusama, receive LKSM, and then stake our LKSM in a collateral pool. First, in order to do anything on Corora, we need to have a Kusama account with KSM token in it. And then we need to initiate a cross-chain transfer between Kusama and the Corora parachain in order to transfer our Kusama to Corora chain. So now that we have Kusama token on our Corora wallet, we can now stake this Kusama in the liquid staking protocol. And when you do so, make sure to, to toggle the option on that says stake LKSM for rewards. Finally, select the earn tab on the left side of the screen and then go to collateral staking. And we're just gonna make sure that our free LKSM is in staked LKSM. I initially ran into this problem. When you toggled that button on the previous screen, it should have automatically staked your LKSM. However, mine was still in free K LKSM. So what I had to do is click this deposit withdraw LKSM button down at the bottom and then deposit LKSM into the staking pool. So just to review what we did, we staked Kusama token in the liquid staking protocol, and this essentially converted our Kusama into LKSM. Then we staked our LKSM into the staking pool. And if we return to the home screen, we can see that we're getting 16% on our staked Kusama, and then we're also beginning to earn collateral staking rewards paid in car. There is a second way to participate in this incentives program. So once you've staked your Kusama and you've received LKSM, you can go to Swap, which is the Corora Swap, the decentralized exchange. You can go to Liquidity, and you're gonna need to become a liquidity provider for the KSM-LKSM pool. And in return, you're gonna receive LP tokens, which you then go to the Earn tab, and you can stake your LP tokens here to start earning car reward. And Corora has allocated 250,000 car, which vests over four months. So if you remove this, these, this LP that you staked before four months, then you're going to lose 70% of the car rewards that you would have received. So that's the end of the incentives program. And I just showed you Corora Swap here where we became a liquidity provider. And just to quickly highlight the uh, decentralized exchange functionality where you can swap between multiple tokens, here that is. It's very similar to other standard uh, decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. Now I want to show you how to mint stable coins using the LKSM that we just got. So the first step is to go to Mint KUSD and you create a new vault and you select which collateral you wanna use. So in this case, we're gonna use LKSM. You can also use Kusama token. And the interesting thing about Corora is that it, it, it supports multi-chain assets. So Bitcoin and Ether will work here eventually. Now on this screen, I put how much LKSM I want to deposit as collateral. And this will of course affect how much KUSD I can mint because we're required to put in an over collateralization of 200%, which means that if I put $100 worth of LKSM in, then I can only mint at most $50 worth of KUSD. Another important parameter to look at is the liquidation ratio of 160%. If the collateral ratio falls below 160%, then I have to pay a 12% liquidity fee on my collateral that I deposited. Finally, the last thing to mention and a very important parameter is the stability fee, which most will be familiar with as the interest rate. Since we're taking out a loan of KUSD, this 3% interest rate is what I will pay on that loan. Now that I've shown you all of Corora's capabilities with stable coins, decentralized swaps, and liquid staking, let's look at how we can string everything together into a novel use case that multiplies your returns. So let's start with Kusama. We have Kusama and we want to liquid stake it, which converts it into LKSM. 
We then use that LKSM as collateral to mint KUSD. This is what I just showed you. We can then take KUSD into Corora Swap and swap it for more Kusama and then go back and stake that Kusama to receive more LKSM. So in this way, we can increase the amount of Kusama that we have staked and increase our total LKSM with a bit of a leveraged position. And this makes financial sense and multiplies your returns because we know that LKSM yields 16% APY and the KUSD loan that we took out in order to get that LKSM only costs us 3% APY. So it's a net positive of 13% and we can do this through liquid staking and minting stable coins. This is a novel use case that Corora has introduced to us. Finally, the last thing to talk about with Corora is its decentralized governance. So it is becoming more decentralized over time and its governmental structure is very similar in nature to the Polkadot and Kusama layer ones because it has a, it has, is made up of three bodies, public, technical committee, and general council. These bodies can submit referenda to the protocol and this is how the proto protocol can be modified in a decentralized way over time through coin voting. And just as a note, the general council and the technical committee are able to veto decisions made by the public chamber, uh, just in case there is anything malicious that gets through or that would be technically infeasible. So now we've seen the main features within Corora. It's decentralized exchange, liquid staking, the ability to mint stable coins, and then it's decentralized governance structure. The final unique selling point of Corora, which is also in line with Polkadot's ideal of cross-chain communications and bridges to other blockchains is the fact that you can use multi-chains as collateral and for payment within Corora. So when you bring in Bitcoin or Ether into Corora for the first time, you don't need to purchase CAR or Corora token in order to make these transactions at first, you can pay in that native token. So this is different than something like Ethereum where you have to purchase Ether in order to make any transactions happen. You can just pay with the tokens that you recently transferred into Corora. This is what the Corora team is calling bring your own gas. And finally, as we saw with the minting of stable coins, we have this ability to use multi-chain assets as collateral. So not only can you use the native car token, Kusama, LKSM, but you can also use things like Bitcoin and Ether. And one of the functions of the governance is to unlock more uh, multi-chain assets to be supported as collateral in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.